everyone. This is Eric DeBoard, and I'm back today to discuss the power of JSON templates. We've recently went through a video series deploying this entire ADFS infrastructure you see here on the slide. And we spent uh, probably about, I think we went through six videos deploying the different components, discussing how to deploy them uh, and what their purposes were. In this video, we're actually going to deploy that entire environment uh, using a template. And it's basically going to create everything that we've talked about in those videos, with the exception of the internal and the external load balancer. Those are being left off because they provide exposure to the internet. And you can create those as uh, additions to this deployment from the template. Now, when we go through this process, I want you to think about other things that you could do with templates, such as student environments, lab environments for classrooms, uh, just about anything that you want to deploy. Keep in mind also that when you deploy these environments, you can tear them right back down in just a matter of a few minutes. So if you want to deploy this solution uh, and take a look at it, maybe spend a few hours with the solution and then delete it, uh, that is a very reasonable thing to do. And you can do that many times until you get familiar with the process or you've uh, learned how you want to modify the tem template for your own solution. So with that said, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, like I said, we are going to deploy this solution uh, using a JSON template. This is the template that I'm going to use. Uh, it's basically uh, representing a number of parameters, variables, and resources like the ones we uh, reviewed when we were deploying the final VM in the series using JSON. What I want to draw to your attention here is for your environment, the only really thing you need to modify in this to make it work for you are the parameters. Any of the parameters that you see a default value for, you can change. So I used to have everything, uh, you know, 80, I had 80 set ADFS in my demonstration. Uh, I've just gone through all of the values in this file. Now I'm opening this with Visual Studio, but it is just a plain text file. And I've changed the default values by adding Acme in front of them. So uh, we can get an entirely different environment than we saw in the video. The other thing I did is I went to my static IP addresses for my first domain controller and my second domain controller, and I just changed them up to use a .17, 172.17 rather than 16, just to show that that uh, could be done. Uh, it looks like I missed one here, so I'll just type in Acme in front of this so you can see how that, it's just a simple addition of text. Uh, for the static IP addresses, you want to make sure those fall into the subnet that you define. So by default, my subnet was 172.16. I have changed that as well. Okay, so I've got 172.17 uh, subnet space, and I've up also updated my production and my uh, DMZ networks to reflect that new space. Now, since we're using the hub benefit, there are a couple of requirements beyond uh, just a standard deployment without hub, and that is that I have to provide this disk storage uh, or this storage account one OS disk VHD URI path. This is the path to my actual storage account where I have uploaded a VHD. Now to learn how to deploy that, I have another video uh, at https colon slash slash aka.ms slash edu slash hub. That takes you through the whole process of sys prepping your own image and uploading it to your own storage account. So basically what I've done here is I've provided a path to that VHD. Uh, and that's very easy to get from the portal once you upload that file. You just go to the properties uh, of your uh, storage account and your VHD, and you can get the path right there. So I've plugged those values in. Uh, and so the other thing that I want to show you that we should do in advance is create a resource group. So let's pop over here to the Azure portal real quick. Here are a listing of all my resource groups that I got by clicking on this little blue cube. I'm just going to add a new one here, and this is the one that we're going to use to complete this deployment uh, of the ADFS template. So I'm simply going to provide a label. I'm going to call this just simply ADFS, and I'm going to choose a region. Uh, and let's just say that this is in West US 2, just to be different. All right, so I'm creating that resource group. Now, the resource group can live anywhere. You don't necessarily have to have your resources in that resource group. Uh, the other thing I want to point out is that since we already have storage accounts created, we need to make sure that when we deploy our VMs, they're in the same region. So let's take a look at the storage accounts I created. Uh, here we are, ADFS EDU01 and 02. We can see that they're in South Central US, so that's going to be important. I'm going to have to specify that as my region when I do my template deployment. 
The other thing I wanted to show you here is how to get that path for the uh, variable. So I'm just going to click on blobs. I'm going to click on my container for my images. I created this container when I uploaded the image. And you can see that once I create on, click on that, I can see my VHD. And once I click on my VHD, here is the path. So I can just copy that and paste it into that uh, variable. OK. All right, with all that outlined, keeping in mind South Central US, we're going to run the PowerShell script. Let me save this template really quickly. OK, that's saved. And then let's go over here to the PowerShell ISE where I have my script. Now, you're going to find this script in the blog uh, below. Uh, and you're also going to find a list of things to think about in a planning worksheet. So maybe getting your domain controller names. ADFS server names, all those names sort of figured out before you run the script, OK? So let's go ahead and run it. Uh, the first thing it's going to ask for is our subscription ID. Uh, the way to get that is to log into the Azure RM account, uh, use that commandlet, and then get Azure RM subscription, and you'll get your subscription ID. Make sure you're using the subscription ID, not the tenant. I've already gotten mine, and I'm just going to paste it here. And then we're going to continue with this deployment. Uh, the first thing it's asking for is the resource group name. That's the one we just created. So I'm just going to call it ADFS. And then a, a deployment name is just an arbitrary name that we can just provide anything as long as it doesn't conflict with another job running somewhere. So let's just call this ADFS EDU. It's going to ask me to log into my subscription here and provide uh, a confirmation through a smart card. So I'm going to do that. Now, you could modify the script to actually log into your account first, grab the subscription, and then move on. Uh, but I'm just using uh, this method because it was the one generated by the portal itself. Now, the next thing it's going to ask for once I'm authenticated here, well, the first thing it's going to do is it's going to register my providers. And then it's going to ask me for my region ID. And we're going to provide South Central US because that is the location of our storage accounts. So you can just provide this in simple text, no spaces, no quotes, South Central US, as we saw in the um, portal. I'm going to hit Enter there. Now, it's asking for an administrator username. This is the username and password that are going to be assigned to every one of these virtual machines. Uh, so they're going to have local credentials that you specify here. That becomes the administrator account on all those. We're also going to ask you for an EDU backup location if you want to back these up later on. So let's just call this ADFS EDU backups 001. Now, this name must be globally unique, and that's why the template doesn't provide it automatically. All storage accounts are globally unique, so you have to have unique names across the globe. You can't conf conflict with someone else's. And I'm going to call the diagnostics location EDU diags 001. OK, uh, because I'm using premium storage, I have to have an alternate location for my di diagnostics. OK, now that is it. Uh, that's all the information it's going to ask for. We're going to pause the video uh, for just a moment and come back and we're going to watch all these objects being created. OK, so I paused the video for about 60 seconds. And you can see here that these objects are already being created for us. Uh, you can see that they're unique. In fact, I just refreshed and we've got a whole lot more. Uh, I've got my Acme in front of all of my objects where I renamed them in my template. My VNICs are also renamed with Acme. You can see that my DMZ and my production network security groups are updated. My actual VNet or virtual network is also updated. Let's refresh again. And we can also see that our virtual machines are coming in. OK, so this is the power of a template. Uh, it's amazing, actually, that we can deploy this entire infrastructure that we spent a good few hours on uh, in the video process. Uh, take all of that and deploy it in just a few minutes. So I'm going to let this finish. All the objects are already here. It took about two minutes for all these objects to appear. Uh, they are still being provisioned in the background. Uh, and once that provisioning is complete, We'll come back uh, into the video here, and I'm just going to show you how to delete the environment. So all the objects showed up in just a matter of minutes. Now, let me just take a second to look at these as well. So if I go to my Acme EDU nets, 
we can see that in addition to them being deployed, they're all configured the way we deployed them. So here's all of our network adapters from our virtual machines that are configured. We can see those static IP addresses I defined in the template. Uh, we can go to our subnets and see our subnets. Uh, we've got our production and our DMZ subnet with the updated names or uh, address ranges. And if I click on these, we can also see that we've got these security groups assigned. So all that happened as a matter of this template. It's pretty powerful, uh, a pretty powerful concept that can be applied in a number of ways. Okay, so let's go ahead and pause. I'll let this finish deploying, and then we'll come back and we will de just delete this as a single object. Okay, so we're back here. Our deployment has completed. Uh, and the thing I want to show now is how I can actually delete this deployment. So I'm actually in my resource group called ADFS. Uh, because I'm in that resource group, I can click on delete here and just type the name of the resource group. Click on delete. And we're going to see it's showing as deleting. That'll take just a few minutes because it tears down the virtual machines first, then it tears down all the other objects. Uh, and that's it. Uh, it's that simple to deploy an ADFS solution using a template. Keep in mind that I use the hub benefit in this case. Uh, and in that case, you do have to have storage accounts created in advance. You upload your sysprepped images into those storage accounts and update the associated uh, parameters of the JSON template. Okay, well, I hope this was helpful for everyone and we will see you in the next video.